Thank you for joining for today's video, an introduction to cockpit gauges. All standard gauges every pilot must know. Uh, the six gauges we're going to co cover can be found on almost every aircraft. And starting in the top left, you have your airspeed indicator. To the right of it, you have your attitude indicator, also called the artificial horizon. Then in the center, there's a clock. To the right of it is your altimeter. And if we go to the bottom left, that's going to be your turn indicator. To the right of it is your heading indicator. To the right of it is your vertical speed indicator. Uh, the two gauges on the right that have the plus sign we're not going to cover today because those have more to do with uh, instrument uh, flight rules and not so much with what we're trying to cover today. So the airspeed indicator is the only instrument to use both the pitot tube and static pressure. The speed of the aircraft is determined by comparing ram air with static air pressure. The greater the differential, the greater the speed. The airspeed indicator is divided into color-coded arcs that define uh, speed ranges. The upper and lower limits of these arcs correspond to some airspeed limitations. Uh, later in the video, I'm going to go into that in much more detail, and I'm going to show you a couple things uh, where this plays a role. Right, so next we have your attitude indicator. Uh, this instrument senses roll and pitch. It's sometimes referred to as the artificial horizon and is critical in poor visibility or IFR flight conditions, um, instrument flight rules. In visual flight rules, it can be used as a quick reference, but at least in my personal experience, my flight instructors do not like it to be relied upon. Um, it's more of just a, a way of checking and making sure that the aircraft is doing what you believe it's doing, but in visual flight rules, it's not to be relied upon 100%. Next up is the altimeter. Uh, the altimeter sensors, senses pressure changes and displays the altitude in feet. It usually has three pointers, which you can see on the screen there. Uh, the long pointer shows in hundreds of feet. The middle sized pointer indicates thousands of feet. And the shortest pointer, it's barely visible, but it's the very top there at the uh, 12 o'clock position, shows in hundreds of thousands of feet, which unless you're in a pressurized cabin, you're probably not gonna be needing to use that one that often. Since barometric pressure affects the accuracy of this instrument, um, it is equipped with an adjustable barometric scale. It's critical to know that the altimeter is uh, controlled by pressure, meaning that if you set it at sea level, then it displays your altitude above sea level. It does not compensate for changes in ground level or terrain. So if you are flying in a mountainous area, it will not provide you with your altitude above the ground. Uh, don't let the ground come up to meet you. Uh, true altitude is the aircraft's height above ground. Most airports use true altitude and will advise you to adjust your altimeter accordingly. However, in, in a cross-country flight, adjustments will need to be made to ensure that you have a true um, altitude reading. I'll cover more on true altitude and absolute altitude errors and corrections uh, in a later video. We'll also cover issues that can arise if the um, with the pedostatic tube or the ports become blocked in a later video. Next is the turn indicator. The turn indicator shows if the aircraft is in a bank. We use the turn indicator to establish and maintain a standard rate turn. At this rate, you will turn three degrees per second, completing a 360 degree turn in two minutes. The notches show wings at level, or turn index, and the and the inclinometer is um, the portion that has a little ball in it. Uh, that will show you the yaw of the aircraft and is used to make sure that a turn is maintained as a coordinated turn. Um, an uncoordinated turn can result in what's known as a slipping turn or a skidding turn, and um, those are just undesirable uh, turn maneuvers in aviation. A good moniker to remember in a turn is step on the ball. So as you go into a, a bank, if the ball moves slightly to one side, uh, that would indicate that you're not in a coordinated turn. And if you apply 
uh, the rudder pedal that corresponds to the way the ball move, it will bring you back into a coordinated turn. So step on the ball. <laughs> so next is the heading indicator. Uh, the heading indicator senses an airplane's movement and displays the heading on a 360 degree azimuth. When properly set, it is your primary source for heading information. Uh, next up uh, is the vertical speed indicator. Vertical speed indicator is just as it sounds. It shows your rate of climb or descent in feet per minute. Uh, it's a very, very useful instrument, uh, probably one that I use most often just probably behind the airspeed indicator. So your um, magnetic compass, which is not shown, uh, magnetic compass is used as a reference and in um, when we're pre-flighting the airplane we will set the, the heading uh, to match the compass, uh, but it's not typically used in normal operating procedures, it's more of a quick reference um, for using your heading. Ideally, your heading indicator is going to be what you use. The magnetic compass is really just a, a backup. All right, so lastly, the airspeed indicator is divided into colored arcs that define speed ranges. The upper and lower limits of these can, um, correspond to some airspeed limitations. Uh, the first por portion, VSO, indicates the stall speed of the aircraft, something to be avoided, and um, I'll demonstrate that shortly. Um, VS1 is the lower limit of the green arc, uh, is stall speed at steady flight with flaps fully extended. The white arc is commonly referred to uh, as the flaps operating range. Uh, you will often be in the white arc while landing. The upper limit of this arc is the max speed with flaps extended. The green arc is the normal operating speed of the aircraft. The upper limit of this green arc is considered the max safe speed for an aircraft under normal smooth conditions. The yellow arc indicates caution. The aircraft should only be at these speeds in smooth air. Uh, the red line is the never exceed speed. Structural damage to the aircraft can occur and structural failure can occur. That can be catastrophic. It's important to note uh, that these speeds, these indicators of speeds, assume wings level um, smooth flight. Uh, maneuvering speeds are not shown. For example, if you're in a 45 degree bank with, um, with upward pitch, we'll put more stress on the aircraft. So consult the aircraft's operator manual for more information on those safe speeds. Okay, so the last item is gonna, I'm gonna show is a power off stall. Um, this is something that we practice regularly while training. And so if you will keep an eye on the airspeed indicator, um, you'll see as it reaches uh, all the way down to the very bottom, the aircraft is going to stall. Uh, the nose is going to pitch down. Uh, then I'll apply full throttle and bring it out of the stall. Um, this is something that we train to know how to handle it. Uh, it's obviously not something that you want to uh, experience uh, under normal flying circumstances. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate that one more time. Watch the airspeed indicator. When it gets down below 40, the aircraft is going to stall, and um, then the, I'll recover the aircraft. All right, well, that concludes this video, and I uh, hope you all enjoyed it and learned something. As always, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please bless the YouTube algorithm by giving the video a like. If you want to see more of this type of content, consider subscribing. If you have any questions or feedback, please leave a comment, and uh, thanks again.